Welcome to our podcast series, Marianne's Musical Soiree, where we share with our audience insights and reflections on Marianne's musical heritage. I am your host, Jane Knox, and always happy to be with you in so many parts of the world. Thank you for being with us. Today, we are going to focus on Marianne's mother, Marta Eggert, and the untold story of the fascinating artist she worked with as a child star in the flourishing multicultural life that existed in Hungary between the wars. In honor of Marta, I feel it is so important to give recognition to the many great Hungarian artists that Marta worked with, many of whom were forced into exile or were victims of the Holocaust. And in the course of our podcast series, we will be focusing on their lives. They were all part of the vibrant artistic life in Budapest between the wars. Before we start with Act One, I want to turn to Marianne to give a special welcome to our Hungarian friends and followers, and of course, all our wonderful guests at Marianne's musical soiree. Greetings, and as one would say in Hungarian, Jonapot Kivanok. Thank you, Marianne. Such a beautiful language, and so many great Hungarian composers who have written such glorious music. It would be a special treat to hear you play a Hungarian composer who was personally well known to your mother. I am sure you know who I am talking about. Please share with our guests what you can tell us about this composer and the reasons you have chosen to play the pieces we're about to hear. My parents worked extensively with the Hungarian pianist and musicologist Otto Herz, who figured prominently in their lives for many years. Otto Herz was close friends with uh, many of the Hungarian exiled artists living in New York City, including, of course, the great Béla Bartók. Uh, my mother met Béla Bartók at one of their gatherings at Otto's apartment and, in fact, sang for him. Of course, we know that Béla Bartók was very definitive about how his music should be interpreted when sung. As an ethnomusicologist, he would go into the Hungarian hinterland and uh, write down the tunes of the farm people that he heard and the locals, if you will. And when my mother sang for him his works, he was impressed, but he said, well, but Marta, this is not really how it goes. In other words, he wanted to have just a flat sound with no vibrato or operatic aspects. And my mother said, well, Maestro, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but this is my training. So it was interesting to see how genuine, how authentic he was to the folk art, as it were. They got along great, to be clear. I've always been fascinated with Bartok for many reasons, especially his dedication to music from his homeland. And I've played Bartok in my life. In fact, we'll hear some selections now. I've chosen three pieces from the Romanian folk dances, and one piece from the Hungarian peasant dances. I chose these at random as a dedication to my mother. Thank you. 
Thank you, Marianne. We just heard Marianne play from Bartok's selection of 15 Hungarian dances, number 8, and three selections from Bartok's Romanian folk dances, numbers 2, 3, and 4. A very appropriate prelude to our focus of our podcast today. Before we begin, I want to add a very special thank you to my Catalan friend Sonia in Barcelona, who has devoted her own extremely precious time and multilingual skills to unearth a treasure trove of information relating to Marta's early artistic career in Hungary. Muchísimas gracias, Sonia, or more appropriately expressed in Catalan, moltos gracias. We are going to divide Marta's early life into a trilogy of three acts. So we start with Act 1, Budapest, 1912. Marta Rosa Matilda Emilia Egert was born in Budapest on 17th of April, 1912, to a musical family. In Marta's own handwriting, she wrote, I was born at home, at Munkachi Utsa, number 29, second floor. My mother was 20 years old with the most beautiful dramatic soprano. My father, Paul Eggert, was born in Berlin. According to Marta, when she cried, her father would play beautiful Viennese melodies. Her love of music was instilled from birth. When Marta was two years old, World War I broke out and life suddenly changed. Marta's childhood would be very short-lived due to severe economic hardship. Marta wrote, I had a voice. I always wanted to become a diva. In fact, I started to sing before I was 10 years old. Marta took lessons with Erzsébet Gerdve, who was a famous music and voice teacher. She was also a dramatic soprano. Erzsi had studied at the Budapest Academy of Music, now the Franz Liszt Conservatory. Marta was a natural talent and perfect student. She appeared with great acclaim in many child roles, and these have all been unearthed in newspapers at the time. At the age of 12, she was already singing Olympia's aria and participating in a Hungarian production of Jacques Offenbach's The Tales of Hoffmann. In April 1926, the Magyar Sinhas, the Hungarian theatre, staged a production of the French chanson operette Mannequin, retitled in Hungarian, a Parisi Kirakat, or Parisian Showcase, with the music by the famous Polish composers Joseph Schulk and the libretto by Jacques Bousquet and Henri Falk, the plot centers around a dreamy shop clerk that imagines the display mannequin become alive when the shop was closed. The director was Ladislaw Vadia, who like many had to eventually flee Hungary. In future podcasts, we'll be meeting Ladislaw again when he crossed paths with Marta in the sound movies. So Marta was aged only 14 when she auditioned for the role of the child mannequin. She was signed up immediately and a child star was born. The Hungarian newspapers proudly exclaimed she was the youngest coloratura in the world. The show was such a success that the theatre's board of directors offered her a permanent contract and when famed Austrian director Max Reinhardt heard about this wunderkind, he invited her to play Manneke in Vienna and Berlin. This was the very beginning of what would become Marta's career as a star of opera, operetta, stage and screen. Act 1 is just an introduction to Marta's fascinating Hungarian story. We have so much more to talk about and stories to tell, including her artistic relationship with the great operetta composer Paul Abraham and Bela Zakovic, the famous actress Francesca Gall, the playwright Giula Komor, the director Ladislaw Vadja, and the film director Bela Gall, to name just a few. We have Marta's own words of admiration, handwritten many years later, and it is a great honour to be able to share Marta's words in Act 2 and Act 3. We will now leave you with Marta singing a famous Hungarian folk song composed by Istvan Kokai. It is entitled E ich dich gesehen, Pirosh Punkas Napian. The German part of the title translates to Before I Saw You. The Hungarian Pirosh Punkas Napian is more subtle and nuanced and refers to Red Pentecost. There is an old tradition in Hungary that around Pentecost or Whitsun, everyone decorates their home with red flowers 
known as Pentecost Roses. A very basic translation to the lyrics of the song goes something like this. I prayed for you on the day of Red Pentecost and waited for your return on this day. The border was full of blooming wild flowers. I waited for you at the crossroads with Pentecost roses. I waited in vain and autumn passed. The rose had withered a long time ago. My joking companion, I will never call you again. In time, ice flowers will bloom in the late frosty winter. Bet you're back, aren't you, my little one? It was not spring that brought me, but the cold of winter. You will stay here with me, and when springtime ends, I will sprinkle your path with a Pentecost rose. We just heard Marta Eggert sing Eich dich gesehen, Pirosh Punkosh Napian, a Hungarian folk song from the album My Life, My Song. Thank you for being our special guests at Marianne's Musical Soiree. We look forward to sharing more insights into Marta's Wunderkind years in Act 2. But in the meantime, please visit our website www.patriamusic.com or follow us on Facebook at Patria Productions. It is always a pleasure to be with you.